Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, most people already know that 5AR blocking drugs like finasteride and dutasteride are very effective at stopping hair loss. What many people don't know, however, is that suppressing DHT has many other health and longevity benefits, and that is why I have created this DHT is a trash hormone video series on my channel, so that we as hair loss witchers can use evidence-based research to debunk the propaganda from DHT simping community within the online manosphere as well as explore the many benefits of suppressing DHT beyond just stopping hair loss. So on that subject, I have been getting a lot of requests to go over whether finasteride and dutasteride are just good anti-aging drugs in general. Now, naturally, being that 5AR inhibitor stop hair loss, you can easily make the case that that merit by itself makes 5AR inhibitors effective anti-aging drugs since going bald will make anybody look older. But the anti-aging benefits of finasteride may go beyond just stopping hair loss. Finasteride may actually be good at preventing and even reversing the aging of the skin. How is this even possible, you may wonder? Well, the idea behind this benefit from finasteride is that DHT could be bad for your skin. People have claimed that DHT can promote the loss of collagen and elastin, which are the two proteins that give your skin firmness and flexibility. This loss of collagen and elastin results in saggy, wrinkly skin as we age. This connection between DHT and premature skin aging has been promoted online where you will find articles like this one from a website called New Skin that sells skincare products. In this article, it is stated Stated that our bodies produce more DHT as we age. This DHT then inhibits elastin production which causes our skin to lose elasticity. This article was written by Dr. Zoe Diana Drelos, who is a real academic dermatologist who is on the board of directors of the American Academy of Dermatology and who has published articles such as this one. So even though this article has no sources listed, it sounds like this doctor has the credentials to claim that DHT increases with age and that DHT inhibits elastin. Of course, such claims do need to be scrutinized before they can be verified regardless of the qualifications of the person making them, so we will examine these claims in a moment. But if it is true that DHT causes skin aging, then 5AR blockers that lower DHT levels like finasteride and dutasteride should help, isn't that right? Well. If you look at online articles written on sites that sell anti-aging products like this one from the Medical Health Authority, you would certainly believe that dutasteride is a great anti-aging drug. According to the article, you can turn back the clock and regain your youthful appearance by using dutasteride, which is what they describe as, quote, the revolutionary anti-aging solution that is taking the world by storm, unquote. They further stress that by using dutasteride, you can, quote, combat the signs of aging and regain your your youthful appearance." Unquote. So, I of course do agree that dutasteride is an amazing drug for hair loss, but the skincare industry, just like the hair loss industry, has plenty of scams. So what is the source for this article and all of its claims? Well, if you click on the two links given, neither one has anything to do with dutasteride. You can find other sites selling supposedly natural DHT blockers as anti-aging drugs like this one here. Like the previous article, this one also claims that DHT increases with age and claims that instead of blocking elastin, DHT actually blocks the production of collagen. So. Is this all just a bunch of hype? Does DHT really age your skin? Is dutasteride the fountain of youth? Is the very well-credentialed Dr. Zoe Diana Drelos correct that DHT increases with age? That seems pretty strange since I did do a video on senile alopecia recently where I showed that DHT levels actually decreased with age and I'll link that video below. That particular video showed that hair loss from old age is a separate genetic disorder that is not related to androgenic alopecia or even DHT, but again, that is a different topic, so go ahead and check out the video if you want to learn more about that. So. Was I wrong about that though? Does DHT actually increase with age? And what is the evidence for the claims that Dr. Drelos makes that DHT inhibits elastin or the claims that others make that DHT inhibits the production of collagen? Well. I, of course, think that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, so I think it is time we oil our blades, drink our potions for a balls deep dive into this fascinating subject. So ready your witcher senses, my fellow hair loss witchers, and let's solve this mystery of this monster contract once and for all. So first of all, before we get into what effect DHT has on the skin exactly, let's tackle the question of what happens to DHT with aging. Do the levels go up like Dr. Drelos claims, or do they actually go down? Well. 
You would think that this is a straightforward question to answer. There is no debate, after all, that in men, testosterone levels fall with age. Since DHT is just a shitty metabolite of testosterone, you would think that its levels would fall too. However, the article that I took the two graphs on testosterone and DHT from notes that while everyone agrees that testosterone levels decline over the lifespan of men, the data on what happens to DHT levels is confusing. There are some studies showing it declines, some that show no change, and some that actually show an increase in DHT levels with age. For example, in this study of 1,157 men aged 40 to 70 years old who were followed for 7 to 10 years, testosterone levels fell at about 2% per year, which is what you would expect with aging. However, DHT actually increased with aging by 3.5% per year. So how do we reconcile this conflicting data? Well, this study we just looked at is an outlier. Most studies do not show an increase in DHT levels with age. If we go back to the study I first showed that found a decrease in DHT with age, you can see that the study actually measured free DHT and not total DHT levels. It is possible that total DHT levels could increase, but free DHT levels could decrease because with aging, sex hormone binding globulin, also known as SHBG, actually increases with age. SHBG is a protein that binds both testosterone and DHT, and the hormone bound to SHBG are inactive. So SHBG levels affect the levels of free testosterone and free DHT, which are the active forms of these hormones. We know that DHT is very tightly bound to SHBG. In fact, it is even more tightly bound than testosterone is. Therefore, it is possible that free DHT falls even if total DHT goes up with age. Remember, it is free DHT that is biologically active, not total DHT. So, when Dr. Drelos claimed in her article that DHT increases with age, that is a bit of a stretch. Most of the data suggests that DHT, like testosterone, actually decreases with age. However, maybe that doesn't really matter. DHT doesn't go away with age, and if we assume that DHT destroys our skin, then maybe the effects of years of exposure to the trash hormone DHT may take their toll on our skin health anyways. So. What about Dr. Dralos' claim that DHT inhibits elastin and decreases the elasticity of the skin? What is the research on the effect of DHT on the structural proteins of the skin, including both collagen and elastin? Well, starting off first with collagen, we're not talking about the worthless new age supplement popular with bone broth and butter coffee slurping Karens who get their health advice from Eric Berg, Dr. Oz, and whatever shitty book they see for sale at Whole Foods. I'll post my video on Eric Berg if you want to learn more about that specific subject. What I am actually talking about, though, is the collagen that our body produces naturally, which is a protein that gives firmness to the skin and which decreases with age, resulting in saggy skin and wrinkles. If you look at very old medical articles like this one from 1970, it appears that treatment with androgens can increase skin collagen levels, as can be seen in this graph of men and women with osteoporosis treated with different androgen preparations. However, this type of article doesn't distinguish between the androgens testosterone and DHT. Nevertheless, one could hypothesize that one of the causes of skin aging could be the decreased synthesis of collagen due to falling androgen levels with age. However, this data implies that both testosterone and DHT improve collagen synthesis and they don't inhibit it. But we have more data on the effects of collagen coming up, so stay tuned. So what about the claims that DHT specifically inhibits elastin production? Well, again, the data on this one is old, and this time it comes from a rat study published way back in 1977. In this article here, the investigators are not looking at the skin, but instead they are looking at the collagen and elastin in the wall of the aorta of the rats. The results of the study are presented in these graphs here. We'll concentrate on the first three groups in these graphs, which are simply labeled as group 1, 2, and 3. These three groups were castrated male mice, so these were mice with very minimal levels of sex hormones to begin with. Group 1 is the control control castrated group. In group 2, the castrated mice received testosterone, and in group 3, they received estrogen. The graphs show that testosterone in group 2 increased collagen production, but it decreased elastin production. In group 3, estrogen had the opposite effect, decreasing collagen production and increasing elastin production. In the context of the study, the investigators were trying to figure out why men have more of a problem with high blood pressure compared to women. Testosterone increases the ratio of collagen to elastin, which makes the blood vessels stiffer, which would cause high blood pressure, while estrogen does the opposite. This means women have more 
elastic blood vessels than men do, which would explain the fact that women have fewer cases of high blood pressure compared to men. But as far as the skin goes, testosterone does appear to decrease elastin. And remember earlier that Dr. Drelos claims that DHT inhibits elastin. So maybe she is basing her claim on studies like this one. However, I could not find any specific studies looking at the effects of DHT in particular on collagen and elastin production in the skin versus just the effects of testosterone or androgens in general. If you consider DHT as just a stronger form of testosterone, then you would expect it to have the same effects of testosterone, only stronger. However, there is data to suggest that the effects of DHT on the androgen receptors are not just due to the fact that DHT binds more tightly to this receptor. As this article notes, quote, Abundant physiologic and genetic data demonstrate that testosterone and DHT are not biologically equivalent. Conformational changes that occur as a result of the binding of different ligands form the structural basis for the recruitment of different cofactors to nuclear receptors. These changes may contribute to the diversity of androgen action." Unquote. So what this is saying is that DHT is not just some super form of testosterone like a lot of DHT simps believe. Rather, it is a different hormone altogether that causes the androgen receptors to do different things than testosterone. That's because the conformational changes that occur when DHT binds with the androgen receptor is different from what occurs with testosterone. And the conformational change is what activates the different downstream effects when the androgen receptor is activated. I made that point in my video on why testosterone does not cause hair loss and why you shouldn't fear things like reflex hyperandrogenicity, which is a completely fake condition that the hair loss forums just made up one day. I'll go ahead and link those videos below. Anyways, my point is, is that testosterone and DHT are different hormones. Testosterone is an alpha chad hormone that is absolutely necessary for male virility and masculinity, while DHT is a beta virgin trash hormone that millions of people suppress across the world with no issues whatsoever. I mean, finasteride is one of the most prescribed medications of the world after all. The fact that these hormones are so different also means that based on the data of the effects of testosterone on collagen and elastin, we don't know for sure if DHT has a same effects. It probably does, but it has not been specifically studied. Fortunately though, the research doesn't end there. There is one area related to the skin where these two androgenic hormones have been specifically studied, and that is in the area of wound healing. During wound healing, there are a number of stages. After the bleeding from a wound stops due to a blood clot forming, there is inflammation followed by fibroblasts generating collagen to form scar tissue. In this article, it is shown that androgens have a major influence on wound healing. It has been observed that in elderly men, wounds heal more slowly than they do in women. The investigators wanted to see if it was testosterone or DHT that was slowing wound healing. So basically what they did is that they created skin wounds in rats and they looked at the effects of previous castration, which reduces testosterone and DHT levels, as as well as the effects of giving a dual type 1 and type 2 5 air blocker called MK434 on the healing of the skin wounds. Well, what the researchers found is that both castration and the 5 air blocking drug MK434 improved wound healing. They found that MK434 decreased DHT by threefold, while at the same time it decreased the wound size and decreased the number of inflammatory cells. The study went to a lot of the molecular mechanisms behind this, which involved cytokines like IL-6, TGF-beta-1, and TNF-alpha. But the important finding was that DHT was the culprit in delaying wound healing, not testosterone. The investigators concluded, quote, Viewed together, these data suggest that androgens influence healing progression by modulating the acute inflammatory response and by altering the dynamic balance of wound cytokine levels, unquote. They then go on to say, quote, Furthermore, we have shown that blocking the conversion of testosterone to DHT accelerates healing and reduces wound IL-6 levels, suggesting that the negative effects of testosterone are through its metabolism to DHT, unquote. Finally, they conclude, quote, inhibition of 5-alpha reductase either topically or systemically might represent a new therapeutic strategy to accelerate healing in elderly males, unquote. These same investigators did two follow-up studies that looked at the healing process more carefully. They found that both testosterone testosterone and DHT increase collagen productions in wounds, but they also found that DHT prevents the regrowth of the skin at the edges of the wound, which is a process called epithelialization by stimulating beta-catenin, which is known to impair wound healing. So these investigators again concluded, quote, 
Moreover, that DHT's in vivo effects were not apparently shared with testosterone, the biosynthesis of which was unperturbed in our study, suggests that epithelialization may t potentially be improved through selective prevention of DHT biosynthesis rather than total androgen blockade, unquote. This bad effect of DHT on wound healing may depend on what kind of wounds we are talking about. This study here looked at burn injuries in mice. In these kind of injuries, testosterone has been shown to actually reduce inflammation and improve healing. So it's not surprising that DHT given under the skin of mice with burn injuries also improved healing. But burn injuries are a very specific form of injury that are a lot different from less severe skin injuries where we have already shown that DHT actually slows healing. Ultraviolet light causes skin damage and skin aging as we all know, so it is certainly possible that DHT may interfere with the skin healing process after its exposure to UV light. So. It does appear that DHT has a negative effect on the skin besides its already known effects on causing hair loss and acne. So is there any clinical data to suggest that 5-AR blockers can improve skin health and help with defects like wrinkles or sagging skin? Well. I had to really dig for this one, and it turns out there is one study I found from Mexico that looked at a natural compound that is used in traditional Chinese medicine. So of course, I'm skeptical of this since I will always trust modern evidence-based medicine over the ancestral wisdom of the Ming Dynasty any day of the week. But anyways, this compound in question is called Honokiol. Honokiol is a very weak type 1 5-AR inhibitor. It is 100 times weaker at blocking the type 1 isoenzyme compared to finasteride, which itself already has a very weak type 1 5-AR blocking effect. Remember, finasteride is a potent type 2 5-AR blocker, not type 1. Honokiol is also an aromatase inhibitor, which means it blocks the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. The theory behind this drug is that by blocking both the 5-AR enzyme and the aromatase enzyme, it would raise testosterone levels without raising DHA. T levels. The investigators felt that skin aging was due to falling testosterone levels with age, which as we've already seen, really does happen. An additional benefit might be a decrease in DHT levels since the drug is a 5-AR blocker after all. Anyways, these researchers did a randomized controlled study using honokiol cream in 40 men with an average age of 60 years. The men all had wrinkles and crow's feet around their eyes as well as loose skin on their faces. So surprisingly, it appears the cream actually helped as you can see in these pictures. 71% of the subjects on Honokiol had a reduced count of wrinkles. So these outcomes are interesting, of course, but I still wouldn't take too much out of the study. Unfortunately, the investigators didn't measure testosterone, DHT, or estrogen levels to see if this cream had any systemic effects. However, if the theory is correct that increasing testosterone while lowering DHT has an anti-aging effect on the skin, then that would mean that finasteride or dutasteride could have even greater effects than this honokiol cream. That is because both drugs can increase testosterone by about 10%, and both drugs are much stronger 5-AR blockers than honokiol. So they reduce serum and skin DHT levels substantially more. Also, neither finasteride nor dutasteride blocks aromatase, meaning these drugs have the potential to slightly raise estrogen levels. However, that can actually be a good thing for your skin health. Estrogen, as we've already seen, promotes elastin synthesis, and there actually is high quality research showing that estrogen deficiency increases skin aging, and estrogen replacement can prevent skin aging. So at least in theory, 5-AR blockers might actually be the perfect drugs for preventing and treating skin aging since they improve multiple factors that help keep your skin looking young. They raise testosterone, they lower DHT, and they slightly raise estrogen levels. All these pharmacological effects are beneficial for your skin. So what can we conclude from all this? Based on the existing research, I can conclude that testosterone decreases with age, and that is one factor in skin aging. DHT probably also decreases with age, at least free DHT, though the data is less conclusive than the data on testosterone. Increase Increasing testosterone pharmacologically should delay skin aging, however, increased testosterone will also increase DHT, which has negative effects on the skin that cancel out the benefits of testosterone. But if you are raising your testosterone while blocking your DHT, you get the best of both worlds. And good news here, chums, finasteride and dutasteride do exactly that. The Honokiol study is just preliminary, but it does suggest that 5-AR blockers might help with skin aging. Of course, more research on this subject could help better validate this hypothesis but what we have so far is supported by mechanistic data, and I am confident that it would play out in clinical trials if they are ever conducted. But 
Even if you don't believe that 5 error blockers will save your skin, that's okay though because there are already plenty of good reasons to take these drugs beyond just stopping hair loss or skin aging. Finasteride has many longevity and health benefits beyond just saving your hair, including cardiovascular and even neurological benefits that DHT simps and finasteride fear mongers do not want you to know about. So please make sure you watch my other videos in the DHT is a Trash Hormone series if you want to learn all about the benefits of finasteride beyond just stopping hair loss. All right, chooms, that was a lot of data to cover, but I hope you found it interesting. So until next time, God bless.